God has cared for these trees, saved them from drought, disease, avalanches, and a thousand tempest floods, but he cannot save them from fools. John Muir was born in Dunbar, Scotland on April 21st, 1838. As children, John and his friends liked to spend their time exploring the Scottish countryside. John was also fascinated by birds. One time he caught a bird and kept it in a cage for an entire year before releasing it back into the freedom of the wilderness. Later in his life, John would write about how the words freedom and wilderness went hand in hand. When John was 11, his family emigrated to the United States and settled on a farm in a small Wisconsin town. In America, John began to create his own inventions. One of his most unique inventions was called the Early Rising Machine, which he could set to jolt him out of bed at a certain time in the morning. Hoping to make some money, John put several of his inventions on display at the Wisconsin State Agricultural Fair. The Early Rising Machine was especially popular and attracted a lot of attention. He made a decent amount of money and received multiple job offers. John was accepted into the University of Wisconsin and used his money to pay the $32 tuition fee. At the university, he studied chemistry and geology. At college, John met two very important people. One was a botanist named Griswold whose work inspired John to begin studying plants himself. The other was a man named Increase Latham who was the first person John had ever heard speak about the importance of preserving the wilderness for future generations. Later in his life, this is what John would become best known for. After college, John set out on an amazing journey. First, he walked a thousand miles from Indianapolis to the Gulf of Mexico. Along the way, he broke down and sketched his observations of the plants he saw in a journal which he labeled John Muir, Earth Planet, Universe. Next, he traveled by boat to California via the Isthmus of Panama. When he arrived in San Francisco, he took one look at the city and immediately wanted to leave, so he set off west towards the Yosemite Valley. While standing on top of a mountain outside of the valley, John observed many boulders lying in unusual places. So, using his knowledge of geology, he theorized that the valley had been carved out by glaciers. John wrote an article on his new theory and submitted it to a magazine. They published it and asked him to write more. Over time, John wrote many articles that were published all throughout the country, gaining him nationwide attention. John became engaged to a woman named Louis Wanda Strenzel, and on April 14, 1880, they were married. John returned to the Yosemite Valley and noticed that parts of it had been destroyed by humans. He began to fight for the creation of a national park around the valley, and on October 1, 1890, President Benjamin Harrison signed the bill that established Yosemite National Park. Soon after that, John created the Sierra Club, which was a group of people completely devoted to protecting the Sierra Nevadas, another valley east of Yosemite. And on December 24, 1914, John passed away from pneumonia at the age of 76. So why was he so important? Well, John Muir had a huge impact on the spiritual lives of many Americans. Through his writings, he was able to make many people aware of the beauty of the American wilderness and why it needed to be preserved. In one of his books titled Our National Parks, John wrote, Thousands of tired, nerve-shaken, over-civilized people are beginning to find out that going to the mountains is going home, that wilderness is a necessity, and that mountain parks and reservations are useful not only as mountains of timber and irrigation rivers, but as fountains of life. John's founding of the Sierra Club, which still exists today, created even more awareness towards the need to preserve the American wilderness for generations upon generations. One of the major themes of the Gilded Age was urbanization. Many people began to move to cities because of their great appeal. Moving to the city promised access to new things such as skyscrapers and new modes of transportation. During a time when it was clear that cities were the place to be, John Muir was one of the driving forces behind the idea of anti-urbanization that if too much of the country was urbanized, none of the beautiful wilderness would remain. If it weren't for him, who knows what the wilderness would look like today, or if there would even be one.